pick up the sound? Yeah, hope so. Okay, go ahead. In 1993, I, I think it was, we had a guy up river on the, that shot a, about an 800 pound steer on the soured property. The steer belonged to Ed Oliver and uh, he shot the steer and then And then he uh, gutted it out and uh, and cut it in quarters, and uh, I got a report on it, so I went up and checked it out. So I just followed the blood spots right over to a cabin at the Kansas Club and uh, knocked on the door, and the guy come to the name the door and I said, what's your name? And he said, Andy. So I said, Andy? What's all this, all these blood spots? And he said, oh, he said, I shot a, a cottontail rabbit. So I, I noticed the spots going across the cabin floor. So I went over to a bed and lifted up the, the bed spread and there was a quarter of, a, of that domestic cow underneath the bed. So uh, I kind of had him in a corner, in a bind, and I asked him, I said, Andy, did you shoot that steer over there? And he said, yeah, I did. And I said, why'd you shoot that steer? And he said, because I was hungry and I wanted something to eat. So I, so he, can, he confessed to me and then he wrote it out in writing that he'd shot that steer because he was hungry. So I took pictures of everything, filed a case with the district attorney's office, and turned my paperwork in, and uh, and I used an old state statute out of the 1800s. It was an old state statute, and uh, later on the judge told me, said, you know, where did you get that state statute? And I said, well, it was in the, in the brand inspector's book. And he said, boy, you lucked out. He said, that's the only statute that hasn't been revived. So it's a good statute. It'll... So he went to court and, uh, and he confessed to it. And so we took care of things. And did he have to go to jail? Uh, yeah, for a short period of time. Okay. But it wasn't... Uh... And what was his punishment? Uh, I think he got 90 days. 90 days, and was there any fines? Yeah, I think there was a, a small fine on it because we 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 uh, salvaged the meat and uh, took it to a locker and had it cut and wrapped and gave it to the to the owner of the cow, so he was happy. So it all worked out. Oh, and do you know what uh, kind of gun he shot the cow with? It was a uh, uh, .30-06. .30-06. Lever action. And was there just one bullet hole? Yeah, just one bullet. Do you remember where it was in the cow? It's right in the cow's forehead. Oh, the cow. <laughs> and was there anybody else at the cabin or just... No, he was the only one there. Okay. Well, that's neat that they took the meat and... That, that's a well, great, was, happy ending. It was fresh enough that it hadn't started to spoil, so we just took it to a locker, and they they froze it for about uh, seven days, kept it in a cool locker, and then they cut it up and wrapped it. And then I took the meat to the guy that owned the cow, so that made him happy. Yes. It didn't go to waste. That's awesome. And was the, the cow was cut up and it was in the cabin? No, no, it was a, just a quarter. He, he, he cut the hide off of it and okay. then just stuck it under the bed. Okay, so it was just like the, a quarter of a cow. Yeah. Okay, I thought he cut up the whole cow. Well, it, he, he did, he cut up the whole cow, but he stored the rest of the uh, meat over another bed, underneath another bed. <laughs> but he was, he was honest. He, he didn't. He didn't try to lie out of it. I had 
too much evidence. Oh yeah. Well, you had the blood, the trail of blood. Yeah. That's and it wasn't a trail. It was like spots in the grass, and then his foot tracks. So I had him lift up his foot and show me his his shoes, and then the the tracks that I found over the cow matched the shoes that he was wearing. So, so you were a good detective. Well, I just raised in the country. Yes, <laughs> you know how to track things. Yeah. Gotcha. Y'all, that's this is Phil Liggett. Give me a little, just a little of your own history. Well, my name is Phil Liggett. I, I was sheriff of Mineral County for 24 years. And I, I grew up in the area. And I done my job. You did. Did you grow up in Creed? Yeah, I, I grew up grew up here in Creed, and I graduated from the Creed High School. And uh, born here? No, I was I wasn't born here, but I I moved here when I was uh, nine years old. Where were you born? Crest Stone, Colorado. Crest Stone. I've never heard of it. <laughs> well, you. You'll probably look it up now. I'll look it up now. And so, and how old were how old were you when you? I mean, you you don't just get to become sheriff. Did you have to work your way up in the well, ranks? Well, uh, <clears throat> I grew up working at the Cottonwood Cove, and then I left Cottonwood Cove when I was 22 and went to work at the 4 U R Ranch on Goose Creek, and I worked there until I got a family and then I came to work, worked up here in the mines around Creed for 20 years. Oh, you worked in the mines? Yeah. In the, which one? I worked at the Imperious Mine five years and then I went over to Homestake Mine Company on Bulldog Mountain. Okay, is that the silver mine? Yeah, silver, lead, zinc, copper, and a little bit of gold. And uh, is Imperious a Clay mine is that the one around the curve? No, 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 no. It's up the canyon. It's uh, north of town here. Okay. What's the one around the curve by the airport? That's called a clay mine. Okay, but d it didn't have a name. No, we just called it the clay mine. The that's clay what, mine. That's what I always heard it called. Is that what they mined clay? No, it was oh. bentonite. Oh. Which they used in the oil industry. Oh. Okay. Gotcha. For well, I. Thank you for answering that question because that has boggled me for years. I've always wondered about that mine because it's so You can drive right up the canyon here just about, oh, half a mile and, and there's an old ore house, O-R-E house, <laughs> alongside the road. Wait. <laughs> an ore house. Yeah. Okay. And that's where they brought the ore out and dumped it over a grizzly and the fine stuff went through the bars and the big rocks went down on the table. Okay. That's where they separated the, the waste from the good okay. ore. And so there was mostly silver mined around here, yeah, right? That was the primary metal was silver. Okay. Because I just stopped by Ken's little shop, Ken Wiley's shop, and he was telling me about, I was buying a gift for a friend and he was telling me about the, um, he showed me a piece of silver, like in a rock form, because I'd never seen one. So, that was nice. And amethyst, and well, zinc, and lead. Well, and a lot of times you can get, you can get amethyst and uh, quartz, uh, I think. lead, and zinc, and the silver will be, the silver would be in all of that. Oh, it's in it. Yeah. It's kind of. Yeah, forms the, to I don't know the, anything about it, like sow belly amethyst has had a lot of silver in it. Really? And you know why they call it sow belly? No. Because it was white like a, a, a mother bear's belly. Okay. Really? Sow yeah. be sow belly yeah. amethyst. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. And but there's no gold. They didn't. You said a little bit of gold here. Well, there's a. There's, there's uh, on further north at the Equity, there's quite a bit of gold, but uh, where we was mining at the Commodore 5, there was some gold, but not a lot. 
And did you have to go into the mountains? To yeah, just a tunnel. Just drive a tunnel in. And, and that, then you'd hit the vein, and the vein would be high as heaven or deep as hell. Oh, my gosh. Was that scary in there? Were you in there a lot? Were you in a long ways inside the mountain? Yeah, about three miles. Oh my gosh. Was that scary for you? No. No. No, it was just. Uh, you, had, you had to make a living. And uh, that was one way you could make a good living. Yeah. Then how did you become sheriff? Well, I run for sheriff in. in uh, in 1982 and was elected in 82 and then I retired in 2007 so I had 24 years. Wow. But I was under sheriff for nine years before that. I was under sheriff nine years before I was elected sheriff. Is that kind of like a deputy? No, it's just you got the sheriff and an under sheriff and then the deputies. Okay. I'm thinking of Andy Griffith and Barney. <laughs> Was it Barney? No. Yeah, Barney Fife. <laughs> okay, I didn't. Re I thought maybe you had to become a police officer, and then. Well, you gotta. You don't have to be a certified law enforcement to be elected for sheriff, but after you're elected, you gotta go get certified. Okay, I got. You don't you. have to be certified to run. But once you're elected, then you got to go get certified. Yeah, so you can... Is there any other interesting stories you want to tell, Phil? Uh, on the girls or the boys? Both. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, miners make dynamite lovers. <laughs> and I know you're, you're going to think about that for a while, but... Uh, there's miners in Creed, and there's miners in Butte, but it takes a miner from Creed to put muck in the shoe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and muck is what? That's rock that you've, that's been broken, that's been blasted. Okay. Thus the mucker's bucket. Yeah. Okay. Well, Phil, thank you so much. Well, it was, it was I liked mining. It was fun. Uh, if you want to make good money, you work hard, you'd make good money. But for those that sat in the lunch, lunch room for two hours after lunch, didn't make real good money. No. Oh, and lastly, you're a member of the... Amethyst, the, the Masonic Lodge. The Masonic Lodge. You have your ring on. Oh, that's not focusing on that. I saw the big uh, neon sign on the way in when I drove in. As it was at Masonic Park. Masonic Park. Which I went there once when I was really little. With, and I played with a girl there, but I can't. So who are you related to here in town? So I'm, I am the granddaughter of Edna and Lewis Watts. And Nancy Vunovich was my mother. I remember Nancy Watts. Yeah. What do you remember about her? Well, she was blonde-headed. No, she was red-headed. Well, but she died of blonde. Because <laughs> she heard the blondes have more fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Phil, you got a sense of humor. Well, I, I worked in the mines with Raymond McClure. He's my married. cousin. Yeah. Suzanne, and she was related to George Cronert? Correct. Yes. And George was my uncle. Well. George and Annie Beebe and George. Yeah. yeah. And then Annie Beebe was my grandma's sister, Edna. Do you remember Edna? No. Okay. That's okay. No, I... They have the other cabin. Well, Edna has the cabin that Andy was in. They built that one. And then George and Elizabeth had the other cabin of yeah. the two cabins. So, no, it wasn't George's cabin. George no. had a fit. <laughs> yeah, it was Edna and Lewis's cabin. Yeah. Well, I I hope I helped you. You did. I just wanted to have this on for the history books, and thank you for your time and. Well, your... 
uh, those cases like those are public record. Okay. So if you want to look it up, you go to the sheriff's office and it'll be on file. Okay. And you can read about it. Yes. I, I want to try, if I can, like write a history of the Kansas Club uh, for the next generations. So I'm just kind of gathering information but here the, and there. The, the statue that I charged Andy with was cattle rustling. Cattle rustling. Yeah. That's the old west. That is. But that fit. That fit the crime. And John Wayne used to come up here. Yeah. He had a place. Do you have no, a place here? Not to my knowledge. He didn't have a place here, but he liked to come to Creed because he 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 liked he liked the town and the people. Yeah. He he stayed at the four you are. Oh, he stayed at four you are. And then he stayed at the Snowshoe Lodge. Wow. That's why they got a, a John. John Wayne room down there at Snowshoe Lodge. That's where that's yeah. the room that John Wayne stayed in. Well, we saw a bunch of that at the Blue Creek restaurant. Yeah, that's uh, the Philburns. Yeah. The Philburns. Yeah. He's a collector of John Wayne. Is that Pops? Is that yeah. who they call Pops? Okay. He was trying to teach me how to grow columbine. <laughs> uh, and Johnny Depp was here a few years back. Yeah. Filmed a movie. Yeah. That was a big deal for, for Creed. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see him come in and make more movies here, because, boy, that drew a crowd. I'd like to see him make a movie about you. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, I'd, I'd like that. I know. <laughs> well, we'll work on it. We'll see what's in store. Well, I don't, I don't know if I'd make a very good actor or not. <laughs> Well, we'd have to hire somebody to play you. No, I want to play myself. Oh, you want to play yourself? I got enough to do that. You got horses. You can ride a horse and shoot a rifle. and That'd be cool, actually. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that next year. Well, there's a star born every day. There is a star is born. <laughs> you never know. Phil, I'm going to go in and play bingo. Are you playing bingo? No. No? I'm not lucky at bingo. <laughs> That's a little bug trying to get in the... Get out of the shot. <laughs> but thank you. And we'll see you at coffee in the morning. I'll be there. Okay. And I'm just going to pay And you're buying coffee, huh? I'm talking to Mike and Kay about that. <laughs> okay.